Now, viewers that are paying attention right now may notice that this post doesn't say anything about deplatforming. This post asks her followers to report the video. What is the point to reporting a video if not to get it taken down? Sean calling Illy's report an attempt at deplatforming is at best a very uninformed interpretation of the situation. No, it's not. I thought this video was gonna be good or something. Recently, we covered a drama from Think Before You Sleep and who was the other person? Illy Mation, that's who it was. It was a drama they had where basically Think Before You Sleep made a video about her video claiming that she was pushing the fat acceptance movement. And then at the same time, she responds by going on her Tumblr and encouraging people to flag down his video. And then Noah Sampson makes a new video responding to all of it. And he's going after Think Before You Sleep. This video is called Think Before You Dox. It's got 200,000 views, so it's doing pretty good, I would say. And uh, I ended up tweeting about this, gauging people's responses and what they thought about it, basically. I said, I haven't watched this all yet. Did Think Before You Sleep get owned? Video is by Noah Sampson. Think Before You Sleep said, can I please just make a video that's not about alienation? Please, internet, just one video. This guy said, I'm assume no. This person named Schizoberry says the deplatforming segment seemed to be pretty stupid and didn't add anything. The guilty by association was pretty stupid too, but the rest of the video wasn't too bad. This guy said it's bad and posted this clip. Sean didn't ask anyone to dox or harass Illy. What he did do, though, is misrepresent and deceptively edit her video in order to conjure ideas which directly motivated the people who did. And when I say directly, I mean directly. We doxed Illy because she tried to get another popular content creator, Think Before You Sleep, taken down by YouTube, all because he made a video rightfully criticizing her now obviously i think you guys know what my argument is going to be here I, th I think it's going to be obvious which is that you know if alienation did get doxxed uh by wherever that happened which i guess we'll find out in this video maybe where it happened that is not think before you sleep's fault in any way unless he encouraged this person or this group of people to dox her it's just not his fault even if his video is bad even if he misrepresented her video it's not his fault you can't hold him responsible for that and that's always the argument i'm going to go to but we haven't seen all of noah Sampson's video yet a lot of people have been talking about the fact that like this person said a few valid points mostly just brain rot a lot of people are kind of poised against Noah Sampson, um, you know, somewhat myself included. I don't particularly like him, but we're going to watch the video and give him a fair shake. I think it's important to, you know, fully take into account what he said and see see if he's right, see if he's wrong, see what he had to say, because uh, I've been following this story and I want to cover the update, you know? Do you think creators are responsible for weaponizing their audiences? I mean, if you directly weaponize them with like intent, then yes, but not necessarily. I think if you encourage your audience to harass someone, then like obviously you are responsible for that. If you encourage your audience to dox someone like you directly wanted that to happen if you make a video being critical of someone and somebody else's response is to take that you know criticism you give to, you give and be like okay now this is our excuse to dox them right uh that's not the creator's fault because no creator would or most creators at least would not endorse doxing someone noah Sampson falsely accused chud logic of being a file and had to delete his twitter account when called out yeah i remember that but maybe this video will be good i don't know maybe it will be we'll find out dox play is hot that's a crazy take what the fuck are you talking about dox play dox play <laughs> That sounds great, dude. When the only way to get ahead is to get doxxed, that's based. All right, we're gonna watch this. You may notice a random child throughout the video. That's me. That's me as a boy. It's my new little voiceover avatar thing. I'm trying that out. Hope it's not terrible. Okay. On December 21st of last year, the Storytime Animation YouTuber Illymation released a video called Perks of Being the Fat Kid. Two months later, the anti-woke YouTube channel Think- Argued with someone about this vid? Just another cringe wokey crying about nothing? A wokey? Cringe wokey. I mean, I guess we'll see, dude. We'll see. Before you sleep, here after referred to as Sean, hi Sean, responded to Illy's video in a video titled Fat Acceptance Cartoon. Right after Sean posted this response, the comment section on Illy's video went through some changes. It was flooded with hate comments, threats, insults, inflammatory accusations, also a lot of anti-Semitism. <laughs> I mean, that may be the case, but that's that's not Think Before You Sleep's fault, right? Anytime you make a video being critical of someone, you're going to get people shitting on you, you know? When I've gotten in big dramas with other creators, I get tons of comments telling me to kill myself, calling me racist. There's posts on different websites saying we got to dox him i hope he dies that's unfortunately just something that something that happens and like I'm, i don't see myself as a victim for that because when people are mad about something there will be some subsect of people that take it too far but it's not think before you sleep's fault he didn't encourage that you know he never did so that's kind of weird when one of her followers reached out on tumblr to ask if she'd seen the video illy replied and after expressing frustration about the harassment she was receiving she ended the post by asking her followers to report the video in response to this one tumblr post sean made a whole new video woke youtuber is trying to deplatform for me, in which he accused Illy of leading a campaign of targeted harassment, targeted harassment campaign, and mass flagging, mass flagging campaign against me, mass flagging campaign, mass flag his channel, mass flagging, mass flag, mass flagging against him and his. I mean, I guess those clips are funny. I think Before You Sleep does have a very uh, nerd emoji voice, but realistically, I mean, she did try to get his video flagged down, right? I feel like I could be wrong. The framing here in the beginning of the video, in my opinion, is kind of like claiming that Think Before You Sleep in his position.
position on this is ridiculous for him to even make a video responding, but it's like, regardless of if her Tumblr had 2,000 followers or 200,000, she's still a large creator encouraging whatever audience she has there to flag him down, right? If she had a private Discord server where she was encouraging people to flag him, we would still have an issue with that, right? Smaller channel, de-platform a smaller creator, harass a much smaller creator in order to de-platform him, de-platform me, de-platform, de-platform me, to try and get me de-platformed and take away his source of income. Take away my source of income. The only evidence he has provided for any of these accusations is that one Tumblr post. This I mean, that one Tumblr post is kind of, it's kind of all the evidence you need. Like if you're, if you're trying to flag down someone's video, which makes them money, and then hypothetically it gets flagged down, they get a strike for cyberbullying and harassment. They can't post for a certain amount of time. That is taking away their income. So I, I feel like that's all the evidence you need. What, what else, what else does there need to be? I don't, I don't think it's like an overreaction to make a video when somebody is like a large creator that you criticized for, for seemingly somewhat valid points. We'll see, you know, I know this video, I know the gist of this video is basically that, um, think before you sleep took Ily out of context. That may be true. But even if he did that, I don't think the justification to flag the video down or deplatform him. Make a video responding. Talk about it. This new video from Sean brought Illy even more targeted harassment, which culminated in her receiving death threats, rape threats, and being doxxed for her sake. Hold on. Only evidence he has provided for any of these accusations is that one Tumblr post. This new video from Sean brought Illy even more targeted harassment, which I mean, this does happen. Once again, like this is an unfortunate consequence of criticizing people online. There are going to be people that take it too far. That doesn't mean that that justifies that behavior. You should, you know, deter that in any way you can. You know, I've historically had harassment disclaimers before my videos. I don't want anyone who I make videos about um, to get harassed or to get people in their comment section. I just want people to watch my video and come away with that with, you know, maybe some new information. Maybe they found it entertaining. Past that point, there's there's literally nothing I want, right? Um, unfortunately, there's always going to be some subsect of people that take it too far. And in this case, I think these are like screenshots or whatever. Um, in this case, he's basically saying that because of the way that uh, TBYOS framed it, he is responsible for the response, uh, which I fundamentally disagree with. Which culminated in her receiving death threats, rape threats, and being doxxed. For her safety, she was forced to leave her home state, breaking the lease on her apartment, which cost her over $10,000 in legal fees. Sean, meanwhile, made out with a slightly better deal. Three videos, 2.3 million views, 40,000 new subscribers, and a big stack of Google AdSense money. There's so much that I want to talk about from this situation. I want to talk about how Sean spends a good amount of his video insulting Illy's appearance under the guise of giving her tips on how to be more attractive. She could easily be considered attractive by most people if she just stopped wearing those grandma glasses, picked better clothes, learned how to style her hair. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this part of the video was like, I guess he's right, but like, what the fuck is wrong? Like, why? Why did you need to do this in the video? Like, I just, I don't, I don't know. This was kind of a crazy thing. I don't think that means that he should be like, once again, deep platform. I think you should be able to say that. I don't think he's cyberbullying her or harassing her, but this, this was like, this was like a very weird segment. Like, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know. This is just fucking autism. Hair instead of always leaving it flat to her head with maximum forehead showing and watch some makeup tutorials. I want to talk about how he spent what he should have made a video about me when I got my haircut. He should have made a video like maybe if you didn't have such a gay ass haircut and you actually dress right and didn't have your forehead showing, maybe if you didn't dress like a little emo dark, then you could actually be considered attractive. It must have been hours digging around her social media accounts to find photos of her eating junk food and of her body at a time when she weighed less in order to accuse her of lying about her diet. So now I have to do some investigating to find out what Alyssa's eating habits are. After scrolling down through her community tab, the only thing I was able to see her eating was ice cream. Strike one. I want to talk about how he had to lie for a lot of these insults, like how the very next post- <laughs> Strike one. I remember watching some of this part of the video and I was like, it is retarded. It doesn't I mean, it should be flagged down, but this part is like <laughs> strike one. <laughs> grimace shake. Whoa, wait. Maybe she won. Maybe she's actually in the right guy. She has the grimace shake. She literally has the grimace shake. <laughs> Strike one. <laughs> Base, dude. Base. Just on her community tab after the milkshake thing showed her holding a bag of wheat bread or how the photo he used to insult her fashion sense by saying she dresses like a homeless person. Holy shit, that is bad. This girl has millions of followers, yet if you saw her out in public, you'd be afraid that she's about to pester you for spare change. I mean, so? Me too. You know, this part of the video, like, I don't think you can disagree with Noah. Like, this part is just, like, fucking stupid. I don't totally agree with the characterization that it's harassment or whatever, which I think is what he's getting at. But, I mean, this part, this part of the video, you can't deny, like, is bad. Like, it is really weird. The worst part is he's, I mean, the thing that he's right about is she looks like she's homeless here. But the thing is just, like, I, like it's like, who cares, you know? Was taken while she was hiking. And Sean knew that, but cropped out the identifying information so that his audience wouldn't. The less perceptive ones, anyway, given that she's, you know, sitting on 
on a log in dirt. I wanna talk about all that, but I have to shelve those points for now because there's a more pressing issue at hand, which is that Sean's videos caused a dox- That's a fire picture. Sing. On the internet, things like doxing and harassment are often treated as natural law. Mean comments are inevitable. Even if you ask true. people not to, that's true. they'll still leave them. If people are going to take things too far, like doxing, then there's not much you can really do to stop it. Kind of true. I mean, it's un un <laughs> it's legal. It's legal to dox people. This seems to be Sean's perspective on the matter. This comment brigading behavior appears to just be a fact of nature that creators can't control. So really, it's on YouTube to make an interface change that addresses this problem. The only real exemption from this excuse seems to be when a creator directly asks their audience to harass or dox someone. If that doesn't happen though, then sorry, it's the internet. Now, while that may be the yeah. case in some situations, this is not one of them. Sean didn't ask anyone to dox or harass Illy. What he did do, though, is misrepresent and deceptively edit her video in order to conjure ideas which directly motivated the people who did. And when Okay, but people online will dox someone for anything. Like, they will dox you for fucking anything. Literally anything. I know people who have been doxed for the most asinine reasons, and I don't want to lay them out here because I don't want people to find their docs or whatever. Um, but like, it's not fucking, it's not uncommon for that to happen, you know? People dox Dream just because he's famous. People dox Corpse Husband just because they, they couldn't see his face and they wanted to. Neither, neither of those people really did anything wrong, deserving of doxing, you know? <clears throat> so yeah, I just think this is, I just think this is a bad argument. Like, even if he misrepresented her video, which I think can be criticized in fairness, like that, that, in fact, if he did that, that should be criticized. Um, and we'll see the rest of this video, how that goes. Uh, but it, it doesn't mean that he is at fault for her getting doxxed. It doesn't. Uh, and for a little update on what happened with this situation, actually, after this video was made, I think before you sleep's video was taken down. He said, I guess I'll have to talk about it here because I can't say it on YouTube right now. A few minutes ago, I opened up YouTube to a message saying that my first video on alienation has been removed for cyberbullying. I've been accused of harassing someone or using slurs to talk about someone's intrinsic traits. I didn't do that. Anyone who watched the video can see I didn't do that, so I've appealed the video. But it's YouTube, so even though I didn't break the rules, we'll see what happens. Curiously, this occurred shortly after Noah Sampson released a video on me yesterday that was so bad faith that I can't believe he actually hit the upload button. This video multiple times accuses me of doxing alienation and encouraging doxing. He basically says that I doxed Alyssa in his uh, video title and his claims in the video get so ridiculous that at 14 minutes he's literally trying to accuse me of trying to get Alyssa killed. Simply because I made a video saying I don't like your video, including with your followers to match like my channel is messed up. I mean, that seems like a decent summary so far. Uh, I don't know if this whole video is bad faith. I don't know if I can agree with that part, but the bottom line is I just don't think his video deserved to go down, you know? Every YouTuber ever will get doxxed at one point in time, unfortunately. It's an unfortunate reality. It happens to everyone. Even people like Mr. Mediker who try to maintain anonymity, they get doxxed. There's not much you can do about it. I obviously, it should be banned on YouTube, but it's not illegal. And so on websites where it can happen, it will happen. Um, you can feel bad for alienation, obviously, but it's still not, think before you sleep's fault. I'm sorry, it's not. When I say directly, I mean directly. We doxed Illy because she tried to get another popular content creator, think before you sleep, taken down by YouTube, all because he made a video rightfully criticizing her. She is also promoting fat culture and how being fit and working out your body is useless and fat phobic. She also promotes the, that's an anti-trans slur, and woke culture. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, regardless of if, even if this stuff was was true, right? Let's let's say hypothetically all of this is real, okay? That's still not a justification for doxing. And Think Before You Sleep would never argue that it is. No mainstream YouTuber ever would. Um, if they do, they're gonna get a lot of shit. Uh, and, and so for that reason, like, like once again, this is just not, this is not Think Before You Sleep's fault. I'm sorry. I think that's a very dumb argument. That was posted on the website that hosted Illy's doxing information. The actual doxing took place on a different website, and the very first post of the original doxing thread shared these same motivations. We need to dox her because she promotes promotes fat culture, she believes in woke bullshit, and when a based YouTuber like Think Before You Sleep called her out, she threw a fit and asked her fans to mass flag his channel to get it deleted. The people harassing her in the comments are motivated by these same ideas. Illy is woke, Illy wants to deplatform Sean, and Illy promotes obesity. These accusations are being repeated across the internet in videos with millions of collective views. They pervade the doxing threads, sprinkled between a sea of death threats, rape threats, and depictions of Illy committing suicide. These ideas are the reason they hate her and all of them every single one was fabricated by sean how he i know the website that they're talking about and in fairness they are you know some of them are kind of kind of crazy some of them are funny some of them are kind of crazy uh it's not 4chan um but uh i remember at one point 
uh, I made a post on there because they had they had liked some of my videos. So I made a self post saying, "Hey, I'm going to do a uh, Q and A or whatever." That'll be funny. And uh, the comment section then was filled with people who were who were talking about doxing me. Right. This is just kind of like what this website does. It's not Kiwi Farms. Um, and that's not justified. That's not it's not cool um, that that happens on that site sometimes. But like it does happen. And it's not think before you sleep's fault. Just because even if he misrepresented her egregiously, I don't think it's his fault. I'm sorry, I don't. He did this is the topic of today's video. So let's check it out. All right, so the first one of these narratives that I wanna look at today is the idea that Illy promotes obesity. One of the main concluding points of Sean's video is that Illy's advice is going to kill people by causing them to eat themselves into an early grave. You know what's great about this advice? Because you conflated being overweight with extreme obesity, so you could say that both are healthy, what's going to happen is that people who watch this video that are 300 pounds are going to say, see, Alyssa is fine with being overweight, I don't have to change either, and then they'll eat themselves into an early grave. Note that it's not just it might happen he said that it's going to happen so it's sort of a direct accusation there just so we're clear about that now that's a pretty serious accusation right so how does he justify it well right before it he presents what he calls illy's final piece of advice and uses that as evidence to argue that she is promoting obesity all right let's see Alyssa's final piece of advice a carrot isn't an inherent good food while chocolate is an inherent bad food Food is just food. No matter how many calories, carbs, sugars, you should feel free to eat whatever food you want to without beating yourself up about it. I'm done. That was such terrible advice. I don't know how this video could be considered as anything other than enabling food addicts to not fix their health. I mean, from that clip, I I would basically agree with this criticism of what she said, right? From that clip itself, like, food isn't just food, you know? The quality of the food matters. How many calories you eat matters, or you'll get fat. So, I mean, from that clip itself, I, I basically agree with him. Before you sleep. So Illy's quotes here that food is just food and you should eat whatever you want were the most important pieces of evidence to Sean's conclusion. Accordingly, they were represented in a few other places. In the thumbnail of his video, for example, Illy is holding a sign that reads, eat what you want to an audience of children while her avatar holds a milkshake and is depicted as being unstable. These quotes seem to be the real sticking point for other creators that covered his video. Food is just food. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Clearly there's a couple of dumbass arguments that are open to be criticized. Well, actually all food is the same. No, you f***ing idiot. Of course all food's not the same. Remember she basically says there's no difference between eating a carrot and a cookie or whatever, pure gold. Did she actually say that? That's really funny. Yeah, I mean the fat acceptance stuff has is, is just gone way too far, I think. You give up on yourself. Shout out Tom Dark Nation. Guys, we actually, we made it in a Noah Samson video. We made it. We literally made it. You guys are really small on the screen there, but chat is there. Chat is literally there. Turn the freak up. Love the Wings of Redemption short on the right yeah lol food what you are proposing is very unhealthy and dangerous what is your problem you evil life destroying monster <laughs> you just ruined a bunch of young people's okay. especially these comments are these comments are pretty crazy ask mad online my dude actually girls lives so did she really say this is she really going to get people killed let's take a closer look at the evidence and find out so one thing i noticed in sean's video is that there's a funny cut when he shows this clip right after the line no matter how many calories carbs and sugars, the video skips just a bit. The s'more changes hands, the boy's blood sugar monitor, that's what this is, it just sort of appears on the chair. There's a break in continuity. So I went back to Illy's actual video and see if you can spot what he decided to cut from this sequence. No matter how many calories, carbs, sugars, whatever is in it, unless you have life-threatening allergies or dietary restrictions to follow, you should feel free to eat whatever food you want to without beating yourself up about it. So immediately before she says that fate line, eat whatever you want, she added a caveat. She said, unless you have life-threatening allergies or dietary restrictions to follow. While this line is being delivered, you can also see on the screen that the boy who has diabetes is taking- I feel like that line is not that important to cut or leave in. I feel like it, I feel like it doesn't drastically change what she said. Like she's, she's not even, when you say dietary restriction as well, you're not talking about like, um, oh, I'm on a diet. What you're talking about there is like, I can't eat peanuts. Therefore I will not eat peanuts. Right. That's the caveat. Or like I have diabetes. Therefore I cannot eat a bunch of sugar, right? That's basically what that is. This cut isn't it. This cut does, this cut doesn't egregiously change what she said. Like it's basically a meaningless statement that didn't really even need to be there. Like it cut nothing. To be fair, it wasn't that important to cut. Why cut it then? I mean, just watch time retention i guess make the video a little snappier i don't know it's just it's just like a statement that changes nothing and like i don't know in the in the clip him in the clip of him talking about it he wasn't talking about like she thinks that you should eat peanuts if you have a peanut allergy unless we'll see that clip later but my understanding is that he's just saying like you shouldn't be you shouldn't be eating whatever you want 
because you'll get fat, right? And that's what she, then she said the opposite. She said, you can eat whatever you want, who cares? Taking a reading of his blood sugar and then gets the green light. So he's good to go for having a s'more with his friends without throwing his blood sugar out of whack. This line, as well as the depiction on screen, is an acknowledgement that there are some exceptions to her statement, which would include, for example, a diabetic person's blood sugar imbalance. But that's not really the argument he's making. Unless there's more of a Think Before You Sleep clip we're gonna see here, that's not the argument Think Before You Sleep even made. For Sean's conclusion, the dietary restrictions recommended to morbidly obese people. He just cut that line right out. And this is important, right? Because this line directly refutes Sean's narrative that Illy is promoting obesity. This phrase, dietary restrictions, rules but his argument is that by promoting the idea that you should eat whatever you want, you are going to be obese. You don't have to have diabetes or a dietary restriction to get obese, right? You can just be a perfectly healthy person who eats in excess and then you get fucking fat. Like this happens. So this is this is just such a, this is, I feel like this argument in particular is very much a stretch. Pulls out the more extreme situations that Sean is referring to when he says that this will cause viewers to eat themselves into an early grave. There's another equally important misrepresentation of what Illy says here, which has to do with context and frame if you noticed, Sean introduces the clip from Illy's video by calling it her advice. Let's see Alyssa's final piece of advice. Now, what does he mean by advice? Just general advice or something more specific? Well, seeing as his conclusion from this advice is that Illy might kill fat people by enabling them to overeat, it's safe to assume, I think, that when he says advice, what he actually means is nutritional advice. You know, advice for dieting and weight loss. That's what the conclusion implies. And so, when these lines, food is just food and carrots aren't good and chocolate isn't bad are being presented as dieting advice. And yeah, you already know people were going to have something to say about that and say about that they did. S'mores are a diet food. Got it. So 27 bars of chocolate is equal to a meal of broccoli, grilled tomato, mashed potatoes, and chicken. Nice to know. I have diabetes type three. Time to eat like four that. trillion so Oreos. It's really funny that last one, given that Illy specifically accounted for diabetic people, but Sean just didn't show it. So then there, there was a bunch of comments about diabetes really, really good. I mean, those people may come away with some misinterpretation or whatever. I guess that's shitty, but I mean, it, he wasn't really talking about diabetes in, in that part of the video, was he? I mean, we can we can run back the clip just to see what Think Before You Sleep said, just to make sure. Because you conflated being overweight with extreme obesity, so you could say that both are healthy, what's going to happen is that people who watch this video that are 300 pounds are going to say, see, Alyssa is fine with being overweight. I don't have to change either. And then they'll eat themselves into an early grave. Note that it's not just- I mean, the early grave thing is kind of dumb. People can make their own choices. They're adults, so. I think that's kind of an extreme claim to make on Think Before You Sleep's part. But by the same token, I, 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 don't, I don't think that that clip, the cutting of that clip was particularly egregious or mattered. Very restrictions rules out the more extreme situations that Sean is referring to when he says that this will cause viewers to eat themselves into an early grave. There's another equally important misrepresentation of what Illy says here, which has to do with context and framing. If you notice, Sean introduces the clip from Illy's video by calling it her advice. Let's see Alyssa's final piece of advice. Now, what does he mean by advice? Just general advice or something more specific? Well, seeing as his conclusion from this advice is that Illy might kill fat people by enabling them to overeat, it's safe to assume, I think, that when he says advice, what he actually means is nutritional advice. You know, advice for dieting and weight loss. That's what the conclusion implies. And so, when these lines, food is just food and carrots aren't good and chocolate isn't bad, are being presented as dieting advice, and yeah, you already know people were gonna have something to say about that and say about about that, they did. S'mores are a diet food. Got it. So 27 bars of chocolate is equal to a meal of broccoli, grilled tomato, mashed potatoes, and chicken. Nice to know. I have diabetes nice type 3. Time to eat 4 trillion Oreos. It's really funny that last one, given that Illy specifically accounted for diabetic people, but Sean just didn't show it, so then there, there was a bunch of comments about diabetes. Really, really good. The other alleged- I mean, those people are just retarded, but he, he didn't make that argument, did he? Kind of think the entire drama is gay and totally not skimmy toilet bursting up tricky times yet. I mean, I guess. I don't, I don't really know what that means. Like, like there, there are important issues being fucking discussed here. It's reductive to say, oh, the entire drama is gay. It's like, you've got deplatforming, okay? You've got deplatforming. And in this case, Think Before You Sleep did get his video removed. You've got conversations about uh, about doxing and audience responsibility. Okay, we've got a lot of issues here. We've got weight loss and fat acceptance coming in here. Like, this is, this is, this is, this is a good drama to talk about, okay? This is an interesting one, I gotta say. I'm sorry. It is. Edged creators uh, covering this video did the same thing. Carrots are definitely healthier for you than a child chocolate bar, so telling kids something otherwise is actually harmful. What has more calories? One pound of broccoli or half a cup of olive oil? 
half a cup of ice. Did one of your professional doctors tell you this? Was, was, the, was the nutritionist the one that told you that carrots and chocolates are the same? I can't believe a full grown adult actually believes this dumb sh Here's a fact. Chocolate is high in sugar and saturated fat. Yeah, they just go on like that for like 10 minutes. They sound like they're having a blast, honestly. There must be a floor to critical thinking that when you blow past it, everything just starts feeling like pure euphoria. This response here from both audiences and creators relies on Sean's framing of Illy's words that they were intended as dieting advice. But the thing is, they weren't. Illy's video has some fairly straightforward themes. She talks about dealing with negative body image, about getting bullied, starting unhealthy eating habits, and frustrations over weight loss. Her video is a direct critique of diet culture and its morality-based food logic. Diet culture is an entire belief system that associates food with morality and thinness with goodness. She relates. I remember after his first video came out, I went to Illy's channel and watched a lot of her videos, including the fat kid one. It was still bad. It's her own experience to the common occurrence of teenagers. I haven't watched a lot of her content. I, I know, I know I remember a few years ago when she like came onto the scene because she was kind of inspired by like the odd ones out guys who I used to kind of pay attention to, but I don't, I don't really know much beyond that. Why does he keep focusing on other people's videos and comments instead of just TBYS's arguments? Well, the reason why is because he's making the argument that like the misinformation that TBYS spread led to all these other channels taking that at face value and spreading that. And then that caused, that was part of like this drama ecosystem that led um, that particular forum to Doxer basically. It's dieting despite already being at a healthy weight. Immediately before the good and bad foods clip, Illy introduces a concept called body neutrality, which advocates for removing the moral <laughs> element from how we view our bodies. She then states that she is about to apply that concept to food. So given the actual content of her video and the direct link she'd just drawn from moral neutrality to food, when she finally actually says these lines, her intent could not be more clear. She's talking about morality. She's saying that eating carrots doesn't make you a good person, just like eating chocolate chocolate doesn't make you a bad person. By presenting only the tail end of this sequence and neglecting to accurately portray the central themes of her entire video, Sean has removed it from all context. The result is that he's framed her as both an idiot that can't do basic math about calories, and more seriously, a dangerous person whose dieting advice will end up with people dead. If I'm going to make the argument that um, Think Before You Sleep is not responsible for Illymation being doxxed, then I think I also have to make the argument that Illymation is not dangerous and she's not responsible if people in her audience decide to uh, decide to get fat. And her advice from here doesn't seem that bad from the clips he's shown. I don't remember the entire video from Think Before You Sleep's thing. I think I actually skipped that part because I was like, I don't fucking care. I just want to know about the deplatforming. Um, but yeah, I don't think Illymation is dangerous. Zoro, thank you for becoming a Remember. Anyway, along with Sean's conclusion that Illy's advice is going to kill people, he also claims that because of this sequence, the message of her video is that she endorses drug abuse. Stop writing criticism off as malicious concern trolling when the ending message of your video was effectively, if you can't stop doing drugs, then drugs aren't bad, and you should take whatever drugs you want and as many drugs as you want. This was yet another inflammatory statement that was mainlined into the beautiful working brains of the people harassing her. Why did you just sell me drugs? Next video, the perks of popping pills. Should I be celebrated for my lifestyle choices? Gather round and cheer me on while I drink heavily five days a week. I'm an alcoholic, accept me. Here's a comment saying she compared coffee with fentanyl. And then here's another comment saying that she actually said that. The severity of these accusations is then compounded by his immediate reminder to viewers that her audience is probably full of children. Keep in mind that Alyssa's videos are clearly targeted at children based on the style of animation and the references and jokes she makes. The implication here is that Illy's video may end up directly harming or possibly killing children. If we hold him to all the assertions he's made here, that's what- Yeah, and that's just not true. That's just not gonna be the case, right? This is not gonna happen that way, you know? <sighs> <laughs> She's not gonna kill kids with her advice. She's not. It's the responsibility of the parents anyway, if there are children watching. It's the responsibility of the parents to figure that the fuck out. Not this fucking YouTuber. The video is telling us. And then we remember his inclusion of children in the thumbnail and his later speculations about her child audience. Considering that in this post you stated that your market is children, do you really think this is being a good role model? And the results are that his viewers have heard his message loud and clear. She should not be telling children that it's okay to be unhealthy. 4,000 likes. Illy, you're feeding 14 year old insecure children lies about health. As a soon to be doctor, uh, yeah, I'm sure that's True. As a soon to be doctor, you are making everything worse for the next generation. A little content warning here for some for some bad stuff. Uh, I hate this lying Jewish blank with all my heart. <laughs> she needs to die. The new video she made is promoting Whoa. childhood obesity. Hey, they said Z. That's different. She is a cancer to this world and needs to be rotting six feet un <laughs> Whoa. under the ground. This comment is from the doxing thread. Uh, they stated they were going to visit her in California. They said they wanted her dead. And at that point, they knew where she lived. Thankfully, Illy was able to move before anything violent happened. But if someone, if this person, for example, had taken action, Sean's video 
very well could have been what pushed them over the edge. Before we move on to the next section, I just want to play the part of Illy's video that comes right after the sequence we just watched, but that Sean decided to just leave out. Oh great, now she's glorifying obesity. I'm not glorifying anything. My point is simple. Don't be a d to fat people. And don't use, oh, I just care about their health, as an excuse. Being fat doesn't automatically mean someone is less healthy or too lazy to look like you or however you think they should look. You don't know these people. Those are the devil's advocate characters there, advocating for the thing Sean believes and says. It's an interesting little detail. Um, all right, so before we continue, I need to pause real quick to talk about the sponsor of today's video, uh, which is Ground New. Talk about the sponsor of my fucking ass. Influencer is essentially like being fired. I am never for deplatforming. People sometimes just don't get it and they want to deplatform people no matter what. Don't send hate to him, by the way. Just make sure you harass and deplatform him. 14,000 likes. Just no, take away no, his no. income by completely taking away his channel. 2,000 likes. Is this the channel that's trying to get other channels deplatformed? 5.7 thousand likes. So is this what actually happened? Well, why don't we take a look at the evidence? Why don't we take a look at the evidence? Noah Sampson. Noah Sampson, in fairness, he has the least insufferable voice out of all of them. His voice is fine. I don't like his, like, delivery, his inflection, but his voice is the least annoying. Think Before You Sleep, I think, is the most annoying voice. And then Illymation. And then Noah Sampson's kind of at the bottom of the rung. Her voice isn't even that bad, so. It's really just Think Before You Sleep, okay? Think Before You Sleep, we're gonna give you what's called a, uh, what's the, oh yeah, a nasal enema. We're gonna clean out your nose. As I mentioned in the intro, there's only one piece of evidence that Sean has presented for every accusation he's made here, and that's Illy's Tumblr post. Specifically, it's last line, which reads, if you or anyone else comes across this video, please report it for cyberbullying. Now, viewers that are paying attention right now may notice that this post doesn't say anything about deplatforming. This post asks her followers to report the video. Report. I mean, what do you think happens from reporting a fucking video, Noah? Things what's the natural conclusion? Not, what is the point the to reporting thing. a video? What is the point to reporting a video if not to get it taken down? Why, Boogie's for if you can't be, you can be nice to fat people, or sorry, can't be nice to fat people, lol. Just because a report can lead to a deplatforming does not make these terms interchangeable. This is retarded. That's what she was, that's the goal of the report. What do you think comes from a report? They go to his house and give him a new teddy bear? That's the point of reporting a fucking video to get it taken down. That's the only reason to report a video. That's the only fucking reason. What is this argument? To understand why that is, uh, let's take a minute to walk through how the deplatforming process actually works. This part will okay. be a bit dry, so I'll throw Thank some you. visuals up on the screen now to keep things interesting for you guys. Enjoy. In order for a YouTube channel to be terminated, it has to receive three channel strikes. Channel strikes are usually issued when a video is reported, that report is reviewed, and the reviewers determine that the video has violated the YouTube community guidelines. I say usually because there's quite a few other things that can happen. If, for example, it's your channel's first time violating the guidelines, you'll most likely get let off with a warning. This warning can be dismissed after 90 days by taking a policy training. If a warning is issued, it can be appealed. An appeal is when you argue your case that the video has been flagged by mistake. If the appeal is granted, then the warning is removed and your eligibility for receiving a warning on your next violation will be reset. Sean has alluded to having his finger on the pulse of YouTube's community guidelines. Speaking of YouTube rules, yeah, but the thing is, even if that is the case, even if like reporting that one video won't necessarily get him banned, it's still closer to getting him banned than not, right? It's still a move to take down his video, to take away a source of income for him. Like this is so, this is so retarded. It's like, well, just because they report the video doesn't mean his channel is going to go down. It's like, I know that dumbass. I know reporting that one video probably won't make his entire channel go down. That doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't mean you should report his video. If you disagree with it, just like talk about it. Talk about the disagreement or don't and ignore it and move the fuck on. I saw Bannon says, why does this guy keep putting out pictures of minors, it's pictures of him. And as someone who regularly reads them, so I wouldn't be surprised if he had a clean record and a warning available to him. I haven't seen him state otherwise. However, if he has violated the guidelines before, then receiving a guilty report would remove his video and give his channel a strike. There's a few other things to go over here though. Just like the warnings, channel strikes can also be appealed. Were he to receive a strike, John would again have the opportunity to argue his case for why he thinks the reviewers got it wrong. If the appeal he submitted were to be granted, his video would go back up and the strike would be removed from his channel. The important thing here though, is that even if he had been issued a warning, appealed the warning, lost the appeal, then received a strike, then appealed that strike and lost that appeal, finally actually getting a strike, that's still not deplatforming. That's step one to deplatform. But it, it's, does that really matter? Is that really like a meaningful distinction? I, I don't, I don't think it is. Like if you're having people flag down a video to get it taken down, like you're taking away a part of their platform, regardless of that. And also like YouTube is not really known for being easy to deal with, which he doesn't seem to really be acknowledging here. If you get a video taken down, even if they're wrong, it's a pain in the fucking ass to get it back up. Like last year I had a video with like a, a meme of like leafy dream drinking bleach in it, right? And uh, YouTube took it down because I said I was encouraging people to drink bleach. And I was like, it's not even real. He's not really drinking it. They denied my appeal. When I emailed them, they denied it. And then I finally had to like contact YouTube by some by some other secret backdoor. And that's the only reason they managed to get the video back up, right? That's literally the only fucking reason. And if you get a strike, like if you have a warning, let's say you already have a warning on YouTube, right? 
and then you get a strike, then you can't post for seven days. That takes away your income. If you get two strikes, I think it's, is it two weeks or is it 90 days? I can't remember. Like this, this is just, this is just retarded. Like, oh, well, it's not really, he didn't, she didn't really deplatform him. She took a step to deplatform. It's like, is that a meaningful distinction? Not really to me. <sighs> I still think you should criticize her for it. She's still trying to get the video taken down. As I said before, deplatforming requires three channel strikes. What I neglected to mention though, is that these strikes expire after 90 days. And in order to actually have your channel terminated, you need to get all three of them within that same 90 day period. This means that Sean would have to go through this whole process three separate times in a period of three months or less. This is what YouTube officials refer to as being a very naughty boy. The only possible way he could call Illy's post an attempted deplatforming in good faith is if all those prerequisites had been met, since there's no evidence that even a single- This is, this is so stupid. This is so retarded. If you're trying to take down someone's video, that is an effort to deplatform them. Do you think Illymation would cry if his channel got deleted? No, she wouldn't. She would be happy about that. I wouldn't be surprised if all of the videos he's ever even made about her now get taken down on YouTube. Like, it, it, it wouldn't really shock me, to be honest. So I, I don't think this is like a bad faith argument. He even said it's the steps to deplatforming. Yes, he did. Well, one of them has. Sean calling Illy's report an attempt at deplatforming is, at best, a very uninformed interpretation of the situation. No, it's not. No, it's fucking not. This is such a dumb argument. I thought this video was going to be good or something. And at worst, dishonest. Either way, it's a Crybaby Olympics gold medal winning complaint. Even if- Crybaby Olympics? Yeah, it's the Crybaby Olympics when someone is trying to get your video taken down. That's part of your fucking job. When you spend hours and hours making a video and then somebody encourages their audience to flag it down off of YouTube, that's the Crybaby Olympics when you talk about how that's a problem, dude. That's the Crybaby fucking Olympics. If her report had resulted in Sean's channel being terminated, that still doesn't make her report an attempt to deplatforming. There's a few reasons for that, and I want to go over them now. I know this is a blast going over the rules. Uh, we're having fun, but try to contain your excitement because this information is very serious and very important, I think. Learning time, learning time. So one of the other claims being made to justify this deplatforming accusation is that Illy asked Sean's channel to be mass flagged. She asked her millions of followers to report the video, and this is an especially serious threat to Sean's livelihood. I told people in her massive 2.5 million person following, my channel is on the line because Alyssa has millions of followers. But this too is false. In terms of YouTube's review process, mass flagging doesn't doesn't actually do anything. The amount of flags that a video receives has no bearing on the reviewer's decisions. Here is YouTube's global head of trust and safety, Matt Halperin, explaining that. Now, it doesn't matter whether there's one flag, you know, a thousand flags, 10,000 flags. It literally makes no difference into how the evaluation works or whether content should stay up uh, or stay down. Here's this guy from YouTube's creator insider channel saying the same thing. Sometimes a video with lots of flags is a result of what the team calls brigading, meaning a why are we putting so much faith in YouTube though? Has YouTube like been the most consistent with policy enforcement or like doing the right thing? <laughs> like, are we, are we really gonna take like the guys who are at the top of fucking YouTube versus the Pakistani fuckers who review my videos? Are we really gonna take these people to have like equal footing? Really? Better than Twitch? It is better than Twitch. A large group of people have tried to gang up on the video in an attempt to take it down, even though it doesn't violate a policy. Can they take it down? No. Again, all videos are evaluated under the same policies, no matter how many flags they- I mean, they may be, but it also depends on the reviewer you get. Like, once again, I've had videos taken down before that one reviewer will tell me this violates YouTube TOS, and then I talked, I managed to talk to somebody who's actually, like, higher up in the chain of command and isn't in a fucking call center somewhere, and this person higher up is like, okay, it clearly doesn't violate it, right? So it, it totally depends on who's reviewing it from YouTube. They have. This term, mass flagging, makes it sound, like, really scary, you know? Mass flagging, oh, it's a massive, huge flag, but it's not. It doesn't affect the review decision. The other point here though on mass flagging is that even if it did affect the review system it wouldn't actually matter in this case so what do you mean it doesn't affect the the review decision when you when you report a video right do you think there's one guy that reviews every youtube video is completely impartial or do you think there's like teams of people there's rooms of people even who are reviewing this stuff who are determining like okay here's the flag how does this fit my guidelines that i have over here you know how does that mix with my subjective opinion of what matters to me and what doesn't right how does this mix with my background all of these things are factors that can come into play when these people are reviewing a youtube video um and obviously the more times you report a video the more times it has an opportunity to be taken down because you could have a new person looking at a report naturally like i think i feel like this is an obvious explanation it's because this wasn't mass flagging the figure being thrown around her 2.5 million subscribers is just it's false it's literally not true illy made this post on tumblr at the time of posting her tumblr account had 2400 followers she didn't post about it anywhere on youtube this number 2400 is less than 0.1 percent of her youtube subscribers sean must have known this too because i mean firstly even though tumblr doesn't display followers publicly, followers never transfer evenly between platforms. But mainly because in the screenshot he shows in his video, Illy's post had 97 notes. 97. That's 0.01% of this supposed army of 2.5 million woke orcs. 
works. No, no. That actually even interacted with what she said. The sheer scale at which this number has been exaggerated here is just, it's awe -inspiring. I mean, that's actually a decent point from Noah. I don't know that it matters that much, but that's a decent point. I mean, it wasn't millions of people flagging it. It was a few thousand. Firing. It also makes his repeated whinging about a larger channel bullying him just kind of funny to watch. Obviously, she doesn't care about bullying because she'll openly call her followers to harass a much smaller creator that has one third of her following. By trying. Yeah, he, I mean, he does sound kind of nerd emoji here, I guess. You got him. Trying to deplatform a smaller creator. He's maxing out his Amex Platinum victim card. He's pulling up to the Oppression Olympics in a Michael Phelps morph suit. We can see you, man. You're this not subtle. The third and final element to this deplatforming accusation is the implication that Illy was false flagging by rallying her audience to falsely <laughs> what the fuck is that this isn't from the original video right he added this flag <laughs> <Take> before you <laughs> see this video send that your is funny. fans and friends to false flag another individual she was false flagging his channel being malicious and trying to get the Let's video taken down for whatever you can people make fun of the leafy style gaming background footage but I, I like it to be honest I think it's fun a lot of shapes and colors and bright lights on the screen it's very it's engaging all right so Illy was asking people to record right. this video while knowing is. that Thank it wasn't you, reportable dude. that's the claim now let's first establish that there's no actual evidence for this argument all of Illy's posts pretty clearly indicate that her intent in flagging the video was to stop the harassment it was and still is causing. None of these posts show her to be knowingly asking for a false flag. Regardless though, let's tame this argument. Two point I mean, regardless of if she knows it's false or not, it can still be a false flag, right? Does intent matter as much as, um, you know, her intended result? Because like, she may have her own reasons, but ultimately what she wants either way is for the video to go down. Points are being raised for this claim. Uh, number one, Sean's video wasn't actually cyberbullying, so reporting it is malicious. I know that my video doesn't break any of them in the hate speech policy or the harassment and cyberbullying policy. The video you're trying to flag does not qualify as harassment. In no way is the video cyberbullying. So firstly, uh, whether or not Sean's video actually broke the rules is not your call. It's not my call. It's not your mom's call. You should call your mom though. It's YouTube's call. YouTube's reviewers decide that. Their opinion is the only opinion that actually- I mean, you can just read the rules and their opinion is not always consistent either. So like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. You can just read the TOS and try to extrapolate the truth. Well, ultimately they're gonna do whatever they want anyway, but like you you can guess. Matters. And if what you're saying is true, then why are we whining about it? John has nothing to worry about. The review will come up negative. If it doesn't, then he can appeal. And if he didn't break the rules, then he'll win that appeal. A review coming up negative doesn't prove ill intent. If that were the case, then- Well, the problem is that there's, there's inconsistent enforcement of the policy. And I think no one knows this, right? Like YouTube has deleted entire channels in the past who haven't clearly broken any of their rules like monkey jones and there's <laughs> it's like okay well if i mass flag you like you should have nothing to worry about if you don't think you broke the rules and it's like well maybe first of all youtube is inconsistent with their policy enforcement they'll let certain people do certain things and other people not do certain things and secondly maybe the rules are retarded maybe it's maybe it's fucking gay to be a hall monitor then every negative review ever made would be a false flag and that's silly you know these things yeah he lost the appeal after noah's video went out exactly his video was fine and then noah's video gets posted and then it goes down because it has a potential to cause bad press for youtube which is i think what they actually care about happen all the time despite its silliness though that didn't stop some of these guys from essentially making this same claim. Do you know what's actually in violation of YouTube's bullying and harassment rules? This Tumblr post. What she's doing with this post right here does actually break YouTube's terms of service. Interestingly, Sean doesn't cite the rule that she allegedly broke here, which is why no one else cited it either. They get all of their information from each other's videos and nothing more. Drama YouTube is an epistemological human center. I assume it's going to be the, the brigading rule. I can't find the rule that Sean is referring to here, so let us know when you respond. In the meantime, though, uh, what I have is this screenshot from YouTube support telling Illy that it's okay for her to submit the report, even if she's not 100% positive that it applies. That's an important note here, I guess, is that YouTube literally gave her the green light to do this. I probably could have mentioned that sooner, but um, th there we go. Surprise, enjoy. So now we're down to just the final argument, which is that Illy's report was false flagging because she didn't even watch the video before reporting it. She went solely off of her friend's biased summary, and that's a false flag because she didn't even know what he said. Make sure to not watch it before doing that, by the way. Go and report his video that I didn't even watch up to that point. She hasn't even watched. She didn't even watch the video, and she even said this herself. This last argument is purely a moral one, right? Because it has no grounds within the guidelines. There's nothing in the rules that says you can't report a video based on a rundown from a trusted source. They don't make you plug in an eye tracker and play the full thing before you click flag. I, I mean, I don't... Yeah, I don't think anybody was even making that argument anyway, so why even say that? The moral claim here is that you should hear out the criticism. It's the right thing to do. Until you do, you have no idea what he's saying, whether or not it's actually bullying, and who knows? Maybe he has a point. Maybe it's worth listening to. Since this is a strictly moral question, there's no real objective way to answer it, uh, so I'll just give my opinion. No, no. Illy didn't ask for this criticism. His video was totally unsolicited. That doesn't mean I think Sean shouldn't be allowed to make his video, but I also don't think that Illy should be expected to sit through it either, especially given the immediate abundance of evidence that the video inspired a harassment.
harassment campaign. Doesn't strike me as some giant leap in logic for her to- I mean, I agree, she shouldn't have to sit through it, but I don't think she should report it either, right? Assume that it may have been made in bad faith. Like, imagine one of your friends comes to you and says, hey, some random 850,000 subscriber YouTube channel made a weird, dishonest, and unnecessarily mean video about you. And that's when you notice the hundreds of comments harassing you for things your friend mentioned being in the video. If you were to then say, yeah, I'm, I'm good on that. Not worth sitting through that, probably. That seems like a pretty normal thing to do. Don't mistake my argument here as me saying people should just start flagging videos for no reason just because they don't like someone. That's not what I'm saying, and that's not what Illy did. My point here is simply that the circumstances of this situation, to me, seem clearly within the bounds of a reasonable response. A practical solution to a pressing problem. And maybe that's- I mean, maybe she saw it as a practical solution. I just don't think it's the right thing to do. I don't think it's a principled thing to do. Um, maybe she thought if she took down the video, then they would stop responding. But certainly, if, you, if the video manages to go down, the people that hate you, who hate you because they think you're trying to deplatform platform them, are not going to be cool with you. You're not going to get that website taken down. So what do you think is going to happen when you get the video taken down? What do you think they're going to do now? How the fuck do you think they're going to feel now, dude? Not that they should do that, but you know. It's not enough for you. Maybe you really do think that she should have watched it. I have seen it suggested by some creators that in this situation, in situations like these, creators only have two options. Either A, make a response video to the response video towards your original video, or B- She literally flagged him because he doesn't like her. I mean, it, she didn't flag him because he doesn't like her. That's not the case. She flagged him because she got mean comments, it seems. And and she feels that he made fun of her appearance or whatever, right? Um, although I don't know if she even doxed at that point. So she, maybe she was flagging him because she thought it would stop the doxing or something. B, ignore it and move on. Who cares if people are mean to you online? Just ignore it or respond to it and make content out of it, you know? Sean seemed particularly enthusiastic True. on this point. If you simply did nothing, Alyssa, you had about four more days before everyone forgot about you. If you want this to go away, then stop trying to get my video and my channel taken down and really put a lot of her time and energy into trying to get me deplatformed when really she should be busy enjoying her vacation in Japan. Everyone moves on with their life after about a week or two, except Alyssa. So setting aside the clearly intimidating language here, I'm gonna be honest, guys, I think you all need to take a second, unplug the surge protector at your feet, and step outside of debate lord land uh, into... What is this guy's Twitter? I actually want to see if I can, like, have a conversation with him. Uh, oh, he probably doesn't have it. He doesn't have a Twitter anymore, does he? Because of the whole Chud Logic thing. Never mind, I guess. Maybe he has an Instagram. He does have an Instagram. Hold on. I'm gonna message him on Instagram, see if he wants to come on. Maybe we'll get a conversation. Hey, bro, watching your vid on stream, you want to know if you want to come on live to talk about it. Okay. His DM things are closed. Just, I had to send like an invite or whatever, but we'll see what he says. To human land. I spoke with some other YouTubers that Sean has made these sorts of unsolicited response videos about. And to this question of why not hear him out and respond, they all said basically the same thing, which was why the hell would I do that? This is Nicole Raffi. Sean made a video about her called feminism is brainwashing women to like feminine men. <laughs> oh man, this is so fun. When I asked about that video, this was her first message. Hey, oh my God, that guy stinks. That can go on the record that I said that. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! He's made two videos about me now, I think. And each time it just brings- I totally think he's a sexist leech. Sexist leech. Why can I not speak? I've got dog on the brain. There's an influx of sexist and radically far-right men to start picking apart, not even the content that I make, but my looks, my voice, basically everything that does not matter. They also tend to not watch my videos and base their opinions off the title itself. So very ill-informed community, I gotta say. It's been a hot minute since I watched the video he made about me, but I just remember thinking that he's jumping through hoops looking for a reason to be upset with what I'm saying. What he and his community do is essentially the equivalent of a Reddit snark page. And then the creator has to face an increase in video dislikes, hate comments, threatening DMs, until Sean makes a video on the next person. Another creator, Tiffany Ferguson, whose video, Mr. Beast's Philanthropy Will Not Save the World, was responded to by Sean with his piece. This girl looks like the girl from Freaks and Geeks. Complaining about capitalism while being a capitalist. Got her ass, ooh. Yep, Hassan House, bad. <laughs> Tiffany also clocked Sean's criticism as being just a trap. If I did actually get any backlash from his audience, I literally did not see it or hear it. So uh, I guess that's a good thing. That obviously seems like if you respond and try to you know, react in any way, that seems to backfire for a lot of these creators as he's talking about because it encourages him to <laughs> continue. I think anyone expecting otherwise just doesn't know what it's like to be a content creator and have this happen to you, especially when the creators in question do not make response videos. And look, I'm a little piggy, okay? I like 
playing around in the mud with the other little muddy little piggies. But that's consensual. Based? You know, I dove into the pit with my own videos. What Sean is doing to these people is not that at all. So anyways, that do you need con do you need someone's consent to make a video about them? I don't really I don't really understand what that argument even is. Are you not allowed to talk about drama? Are you not allowed to like make a video criticizing someone if they're not going to respond or something? I mean, if you want to call him bad faith, you can call him that. He he might be, you know. I don't watch a ton of TVYS, but um yeah. That's the deplatforming claim hopefully addressed. If nothing else, these examples should hopefully make you think before you watch, think before you sleep, before you watch I have yourself. No tips, Hunter. Think about watching Sean's video and going to bed. The last okay, I think we've I think we've gone through the majority of the stuff that matters. Hold on. Last of these three fabricated narratives that I want to talk about today is the idea that Illy is woke. She's been infected by that wokeness, apparently. She's been drinking the woke aid, which is what I call it, because I think being woke is cool. This was the third major motivation for the people who doxed her, and another justification for harassment. Sean is an anti-woke channel, so the label Thank is you, pretty self-explanatory. He is against things that are woke, therefore things that are woke are, to him and his audience, bad. He supports this complex theory by framing what he calls woke ideas in a negative light anytime he brings them up on his channel. When you cut together a compilation of all the things he does this with, it's pretty funny to watch. In the past, he's used the term to talk about things like economics, communism, woke means communism, film and media, woke comedians aren't funny, this is why the woke crowd continues to remain as terrible writers, woke tell- Okay, I kind of don't fucking care about this part, but yeah, I mean, based, <laughs> based on the clips we were shown, I don't think he really misrepresents her, in my opinion, he didn't misrepresent her at all, at least from, from the clips that Noah showed. I think the worst thing, thing before you sleep said, I will say, is definitely saying, like, she's going to get people killed for her takes on eating, which is, I think that's just dumb. Um, but I don't think people before you sleep is responsible for his audience, and he's not responsible for this weird website for doing that. Research for girl dummies. And also, she's dumb and woke. If you're taking advice from your fat friend, uh, and you named him as a valid source, it's... Sensitive society is morbidly obese. GG. Some of the information she was using in her video as sources were ultimately just opinion pieces not backed by science at all. Examples of like this occur a lot in the video where Illumination makes like some kind of infographic that doesn't make a lot of sense scientifically and starts kind of citing towards sources that also don't make a lot of sense. How exactly are you supposed to deconstruct and debunk an argument if you don't understand? Uh, no, no, no. Wait, but I'm happier than I've ever been. I can relate to a lot of stuff that you said in this video. Thank you. I was never the fat kid. I can't imagine how it was for you. I imagine people to eat whatever they want, even if they're on the brink of death. And then they'll eat themselves into an early grave. She isn't just woke. No, her wokeness makes her a literal danger to children. She's okay with yeah, I think Think Before You Sleep's arguments on that are kind of retarded. I wouldn't disagree, but regardless of that, I think he has a right to say what he wants. And and I also don't think that he, I don't think that he did anything wrong with his video in terms of like deserving of deplatforming. And this this argument Noah made about like, oh, well, there's a whole process for deplatforming and, you know, maybe his one video will get taken down, but it's up to YouTube ultimately. We can't decide that. It's like, it's just so dumb. And, and then after his video gets made, Think Before You Sleep's video goes down. I, don't, I thought, I thought this Noah video would be better and it just wasn't. It just wasn't. Um, let's see if he got back to me on Instagram. Uh, he did not yet, but maybe he will. Maybe he will. We shall see. He might not even get back today, but I think it'd be interesting to have a conversation about it. You know, I could have things before you sleep on too. Maybe they'd have a little little debate to hash it out. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, overall, uh, if we want to say that Think Before You Sleep's video was bad, you can debate that all you want. I just don't think it was deserving of going down at all. Sorry. That's my take. <clears throat> That's my thoughts on that. I do want to talk to Destiny about this. I want, because I, I want to get him to react to it. Is he, what is he doing right now? So like I created templates for my major. Okay. He's not doing anything important. Hello. Shalom. Hi, what do you want? I want to talk about audience responsibility with you. Okay. You You've got five minutes. What do you mean five minutes? Don't be gay. Okay. I have a big debate on the first time. I'm trying to do this. Yeah, but go ahead. Do you know who Think Before You Sleep is? No. Okay. He's like one of these um maybe like anti woke type YouTubers. He makes videos like this person's dumb for being woke. Uh -huh. This woke ideology is oh, dumb. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cringe. He made a video about this Illimation person where he basically said that she was like promoting fat acceptance, right? Um, okay. And uh, he he said in his video he was like it's possible that some of her advice is going to lead to people overeating and then dying. Is basically what he said, right? Um, okay. The argument were kind of crazy there were also other segments of the video that weren't good like him like analyzing her dress code and being like actually she shouldn't do this because it makes her look ugly but if she did this she would look better like it was kind of a dumb it, there were dumb parts of the video right okay. um so illy mation saw this video and she decided to go on her tumblr and encourage people to flag down the video because she said it was cyberbullying and she said it needs to go down which i don't think it was cyberbullying he definitely he definitely insulted okay, I get the point. what am i what am i what am i yeah what am i what do you need my opinion on okay so noah samson is now weighed in he's weighed in on the situation oh. 
situation. Oh, God. Don't even, yeah. And Whatever re- his opinion is, mine is going to be the exact opposite, but go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, no, cause... wait, because you've got, like, the anti-woke on the other side. Oh, fuck. Okay, sorry, you've go got both sides. You've got both sides. Got That's both why retards, it's so good. Yes. Noah Samson made a video saying that the reason why, uh, think before you sleep, his video maybe should go down is because this other separate forum, not Kiwi Farms, not Website Zero, another site, basically they saw the fact that she was trying to get um, Think Before You Sleep's video get taken down, and then they decided to dox her. And when she got doxed, she had to break the lease in her apartment, and she lost $10,000, she left. And basically, he's he's implying that um, Think Before You Sleep is responsible for the fact that because, in Noah's view, he spread misinformation about Illy's video. Therefore, these people took that and ran with it, and his video caused her to get doxed. Um, I think that's really dumb. I, I don't put a lot of weight on audience responsibility, but I, I know you put a little more. What do you think? Yeah, I put a huge weight on audience responsibility. Um, But I mean, like, just doing a video about someone, I don't think is enough to say that it's your fault they're getting doxxed or whatever. Um, I think that if it depends on the audience that you've crafted, though, like if you have an audience that does that often, then fuck you. You, I think you have a lot more liability for it. But if a totally unrelated third party is doing it, I'm not sure. But I would need to be more informed on like their audiences and what kind of behavior they generally engage in for me to have a stronger opinion about it. It seems to me like an unrelated third party. Like it's a separate website. This Mm -hmm. website is like worse. Think before you sleep is like maybe you could kind of say he's right wing this website has a lot more like kind of far right people on it um and so they Mm -hmm. they kind of are more inclined to you know go behavior like that um they've doxed Mm -hmm. a bunch of youtubers um at one point myself included unfortunately and they they dox people for like very asinine reasons and they typed out an explanation saying well because this person illumination is woke because she tried to deplatform thing before you sleep we're gonna we're gonna dox her um and then noah makes the argument he's like well it's actually not deplatforming because you have to have three videos get striked to get deplatformed and in reality she just wanted one video get taken down um no is advocating for dmca or a community, community guideline strike community guidelines is what illumination was trying to do to think before you sleep um, what and under what basis under the basis of attacking her appearance because he said that her outfits were bad so the question when i always look at situations like this i always try to back up and i try to ask like what's the rule so like what what is the rule that we would craft here so then if you make videos about people and you'd comment on their appearance that should be banned or i know there's... Like, that doesn't seem like a satisfying rule to me. like i should be able to call somebody ugly without being banned that seems a little bit wild no i, I know YouTube has a rule where you can't attack people's intrinsic attributes. It's not really enforced across the board, but basically after commentary channels like Leafy were being like, look at this kid's fucked up tooth. Um, they, they they put this rule in place where like you can't target someone to be like, this guy's fucking disgusting. People on YouTube still do stuff like that and they don't usually get hit. It kind of depends on who you are and like, you know, how YouTube wants to enforce it that day. Um, but Think Before You Sleep's video wasn't down. Then Noah Samson makes a video and then it immediately goes down basically like within hours. Uh, it, it goes down off of YouTube. Um, so I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting drama. I know August would love you to look at it. I know you're doing debate prep, but I know it, it would uh, it would absolutely tickle you. Okay. Community guidelines on harassment. Um, content that contains prolonged insults or slurs based on someone's intrinsic character or intrinsic attributes. These attributes include their protected group st- status, physical attributes, or their status as a survivor of sexual assault, non-consensual, intimate imagery distribution, domestic abuse, child abuse, and more. Content uploaded with the intent to shame, deceive, or insult a minor. This yeah, he, he, he absolutely didn't do any of that, I would say. Well, the top one, it sounds like he could have, right? If we're saying physical attributes. Is someone's physical attributes like how they insult? dress? I don't know. That's pretty vague. Yeah. Physical attributes, what does that mean? Is that weight or does that include like a scar? Or does that include like, I don't know. But it also says prolonged insults. When you say, the thing is too, and like, I just don't know. When you say like he was talking about like the outfit they were wearing, mm-hmm. was it like, oh, like this person's saying that no clothes fit them well, but if they wear this style of clothing, it would actually be flattering. Or were they saying things like, this person wouldn't look like such a fat fucking slob bitch if she knew how to fucking walk into a fucking store and pick out an appropriate fucking outfit. He definitely like, didn't, he wor- definitely didn't say fat slob bitch, but he was like, this outfit is worse for you. Whereas is this outfit shows more of your forehead, which people may find unattractive. Like it was that kind of thing. Huh? Like it, in, in my opinion, obviously YouTube community guidelines may disagree. I think you should be able to call ugly people ugly on YouTube as much as you want. Obviously that's not in my hands. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it seems to me like his video didn't really violate the guidelines and they ended up taking it down anyway. I think the worst thing that Think Before You Sleep did in that video was be like, by giving this dumb advice on on dieting and how you shouldn't have to worry about what you eat, she's going to directly lead children to die, which is kind of what he said. I think that was really dumb. But I don't think that's deserving of deplatforming either. I feel like you should just disagree with the argument and talk about it. Um, I guess. I don't know. I would have to know why the channel got taken down. Like what? Because he should have been given a specific community guidelines warning, right? Or it should have said specifically what it was for, right? Yeah. So they said it was removed for a violation of our community guidelines. His explanation was that it Wait, was- Wait, it doesn't say what? Uh, let's see. He, ha- 
he had a he had a tweet about it. Um, <clears throat> removed for cyberbullying. I've been accused of harassing someone or using slurs to talk about someone's intrinsic traits. I didn't do that. Which oh, it was the so it was it was exactly the policy that we yes, looked at. It, it was, was that one. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it's probably. I think it's okay for YouTube and energy to, to trying to get like a ten minute video shitting on the way somebody looks. I think that's fine. But um, I mean, if it's like an insult or insults, it's part of like a larger work that seems really stupid. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know. But I'd have to know more about like what the video was like. But yeah, it seems dumb. I don't, Why do you think YouTube should have a rule against shitting on someone's looks? Um, I didn't say that. I said that um, the way that this is written, content that contains prolonged insults based on someone's things. So like if you're gonna make like a 10 minute video shitting on the way somebody looks, I think it's probably, I can understand having like a community guidelines against that. But if it's like, if you're insulting somebody's appearance as part of like a video or whatever, I don't think that should necessarily be against the rules. But I think there's probably a difference between the two of those things. And I'm more sympathetic towards the first rule banning than the second one. Okay, interesting. Uh, so like if you made like an hour video about Boogie and all the horrible things he's done in his life and like 10 minutes of that hour long video are about like his weight problems and him being a fat fuck and disgusting and blah 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 that would be fine but if you made it just a 10 minute video just like talking about how much of a fat fucking loser he was then maybe not fine i guess like i'm based on youtube standards not yours based on youtube standards yeah okay gotcha yeah i don't know it just it it seems very i i i I don't like the idea that um i know you put a lot of weight in audience responsibility i don't i don't put nearly as much and i i really don't like this idea that because you make a video about someone being critical even if your video was like let's let's say let's let's give the most uncharitable view of think Parisi's video let's say he was very uh dishonest about the video he criticized right i don't think that just because he made that video and then some people in his audience or outside of his audience were like hey this is our justification to dox you know this girl i don't mm-hmm. I, i'm in my opinion unless think before you sleep says that or encourages that it's not really his fault how old is that guy uh i think this is sean head's boyfriend or fiance or whatever right no Brittany venti uh or Brittany venti, i don't yeah. know tw- late 20s maybe <sighs> Um, th- this is like my, this is my macro view on this stuff. And then you take it or leave it or whatever. This is, this is my only issue. Okay. The only thing I don't like is when people are dishonest. If people are honest, then I'm okay. I'm more okay with them doing bad things, but when they're dishonest, I just want them to off themselves. So there are ways when I cover people where I know exactly what's going to happen. Okay. Um, and if I say certain things and if I portray somebody in a certain light, I know exactly the type of response I'm going to elicit from my community to like a 95% certainty. Like there might be some off weird things that happen and you just like, oh shit, I had no idea. But for the most part, you know what's going to happen. I don't like it when people pretend like they have no fucking idea what things are going to look like when they do a particular thing. Um, so that's the only thing I would ask for. If content creators are going to engage in a certain thing, then be honest about it and, and understand what you're doing. Or you should understand what you're doing. Uh, especially if you're a popular creator, you make way too much money for a laughably small amount of, of like education, training and everything. Like th- that's a, at least one part of your job that you can be aware of. Like I did a bunch of interviews with students at, or I did a few at the University of Austin or University of Texas at Austin a few days ago. And before I went over that video, I know, I know, because I'm not fucking retarded, and every creator knows this. If I go over a video with a kid giving an interview on camera, if I'm like kind of critical, they're going to roast the fuck out of this guy. And if anybody finds his shit, they're going to go on social media, they're going to blow pictures, it's going to be horrible. So before I went over that, I went over like, hey, listen, these kids are brave for talking to me. Uh, the fact that they even want to talk on camera is really cool. If we blow people like this up, they're not going to talk to us in the future. Like, I'll give that speech around because I know what's going to happen. But if I were to just like go over it on stream, blow it up, and then this kid's picture or docs ends up leaking and everybody's blowing him up, and then like, oh, I didn't know that would happen. I I no audience. I can't do uh, uh, that yourself like that's you obviously know what's going to happen you fucking moron don't pretend like you don't know that's the only thing that i ask but if somebody's like listen if i cover it like this people might harass the motherfucker yeah sure but they're an online content creator fuck them that's part of then at least you're being honest about it's like okay well we can go from there but yeah that's that's the only thing i feel like when it comes to audience responsibilities like you know what's going to happen when you cover people a certain way so be aware of that and if you want to counter that then head it off but if you don't give a fuck then be honest you don't give a fuck don't say you had no idea i mean obviously stuff like that might happen but you think it's enough to give like a basically give like a tacit like disclaimer be like hey guys don't harass this person don't give them shit i like talking to them you think that's that you think that's enough to like absolve yourself of responsibility basically for whatever may happen if you i mean if you're doing that seriously and you're making best effort yeah because it's not like you shouldn't okay. be able to not cover people you shouldn't be able to not insult people right yeah but yeah exactly okay well good luck with whatever gay boring debate you're okay doing. also i'm not signing off in particular on any of this particular drama because i haven't watched the videos i yeah. might feel very differently about this particular instance based on seeing how the people talk about each other so exactly so true okay. 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 he's not gonna watch the video this guy sucks so I want to say you should be careful what you say about tips or no Sam's when I see it accused of murder. I think before you sleep, do you want to come on stream to talk about what happened with that video? I messaged Noah to see if he would come on. Actually, let me check that on my Instagram. He said, I don't want to come on, but if you have questions, feel free to send them. Okay, I think my biggest question for Noah Samson would be, um, gotcha. My biggest question 
would be if you think that think where you sleep should be held responsible for the actions of a third party site that docks silly. Agree's video about her was kind of silly, but from my perspective, it's not really his fault. Some crazy people took it too far, especially considering He'd never support that kind of behavior from what I've seen. <laughs> from what I saw, your video was somewhat vague with the wording, or maybe I just find it dumb. You would truly blame him for what they did. But yeah, looking for a bit more elaboration if you have any. Little time for a debate. <sighs> I can answer a few questions. I'm not really looking to debate you. I'm just I'm just looking for a conversation. Think before you sleep. Think before you come. True. I'm gonna go for a call. All right. <sighs> Yo. Hello. How's it going? Uh, it's good. So. Uh, can you hear me okay? Sorry. Sorry. What'd you say? You hear me okay? The the call uh, sound yeah, didn't good. come in. Yeah, it sounds good. I just I turned the call sound off because it bothers me. It gives me autism. Um. Oh, that makes sense. So what do you think about that Noah video? Um. I thought it was uh. There were a lot of times where I, sorry I didn't see your response to it. I woke up after you did it. Yeah. You're good. Um. There were a lot of times where he accused me that the things that aren't really fair to accuse someone of like a common example that people will use is um let's say you make a video and then somebody goes and attacks somebody else now in your video you didn't reference anything to attacking other people you just made a video about politics or something like that uh, this actually happened a few years ago where uh, somebody killed a guy in the name of bernie sanders and people were trying to say he was responsible for it but no bernie sanders is not responsible for that shit right so noah kind of did like a lot of that where it's like you made bad video about out alienation therefore everything that a bunch of random people on the internet do is your fault yeah um, from, from my perspective that was that was the dumbest part of his video like I don't, I don't think you're responsible for these these people doxing her um i mean the thing is that that just happens and i'm not saying it's like okay that it happens but it's an unfortunate result of making critical videos in general some people will take it too far especially if it gets a bunch of views right yeah so i thought that was pretty dumb um obviously you know i thought some of the stuff about how she needs to style herself better i thought those parts of the video were cringe but i don't think there's much we can really talk about there it's just like you would probably just agree to disagree i don't i don't think there's like much of a discussion to be had there um well that was kind of the, the main part that people had issue <laughs> with and i was like i did post in a community post like yeah my bad maybe i shouldn't i should have left that part of the video out or should have um worded differently yeah. uh, that video that part of the video is not specifically like none of the, the advice in, in any of the videos i make is for the people i'm making it about it's for people in the audience to say hey, this person has similar issues to me so i'm going to use this to self-reflect it's kind of like a psychology thing um so what's been apparent is that a lot of people these days uh, don't shower and they don't like take any uh, self-care or anything like that. So they look like they're basically like homeless all day and they wonder why nice. they can't get jobs or find relationships and shit like that. So I've made a point and, and a lot of people of those people think that, oh, they're just genetically bound to being uh, to looking the way they do or to not looking good. And so I've made it a point in a couple of videos to find cases where people do look good, but they just didn't do the right styling or didn't shower and stuff like that and say, hey, this is what they look like when they don't take care of themselves. Here's a random photo that I found where they kind of did a good job. This is how much better you can look by you know styling your hair properly and wearing clothes that fit pro uh, properly. Yeah. So it's for those specific people. Okay. What did you think it, about, it, in, in his video, one of the other things he talked about was um, there were clips where you were like, you know, if you take Illy's advice, you might die or whatever from it. Did you think that was over the line maybe? Um, I mean, if you are 300 pounds and you're eating junk food all day, yeah, uh, is you, it, it, that will cause you a lot of problems. Do you, do, you, um, and, do, you, do you think that the real conclusion to her argument though was that like, if you're obese, you should just keep eating? Like, is that is that like the full conclusion there? Um, it, it's hard to say because she didn't specifically say um, the the people she's referencing Aubrey Gordon and because Noah left that whole part of the video out where she's talking about this podcast called Maintenance Phase and how it changed her perspective on health. Mm -hmm. Well, Aubrey Gordon is a uh, who is one of the people who runs that podcast is a major fat acceptance advocate and denies that being overweight is even unhealthy. Right. So you're saying like the people she's citing kind of kind of yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So it's it's reasonable to include that with she if she says like hey uh, these people are really influenced uh, about my ideas on health and she didn't specify what those ideas were and then a big part of their podcast is kind of you know uh fat acceptance gaslighting where it's like hey it's um they commented on a, a documentary called super size me which uh turned out to be a little bit fake because the guy who uh was in it yeah, was, was an drinking, alcoholic right? and didn't yeah. disclose that yeah so uh a little bit of a problem but the, that's not the issue that i have with that the issue is like um they're like this guy lied he um said that he ate five thousand calories per day at mcdonald's it's actually impossible to do that um never mind that his diet logs, right? <laughs> i've definitely yeah, done it's, it yeah yeah it's it, it's actually fairly well the, the the context that they wrote this under and uh, the people who run that podcast don't like fact check
check anything. They, they kind of make it look like they do research. Like Noah's very good at making it look like he's done research, but doesn't actually question the, the research that he's reading. Or like, um, like one of the, the claims he makes, he, he goes on some, he, I guess he wanted to prove that he watched my videos this time, actually, instead of just watching half of a video and commenting on it, is that he's like, racism uh, bad and, and everybody discriminate because this statistic here. I was like, well, this statistic here doesn't actually say racism. It just says that there's, there's a disparity. How do you know that disparity is because of racism? So they, they give a lot of, uh, of research like that where it's not very critical. And so their claim with the fast food McDonald's thing is that, um, oh, well, you can't get to 500 calories a day or 5,000 calories a day with McDonald's with a single meal uh, with a dessert. And I said that you're full of shit. Did you do any fact checking on this? Well, no, they tried to fact check it during the podcast. And the guy was the guy, the other guy, I can't remember his name right now. I think Michael Hobbs, I think is his name. It's like a, a Huffington Post journalist. Um, he said, oh, well, a Big Mac is 450 calories. Therefore, it's impossible to reach 500 calories by doing that one meal or three meals a day. And then I did the math on it. It's actually possible to hit 5,000 calories in two meals with single items, with fries, a drink, a McFlurry, and a, a Big Mac. Mm-hmm. So um, it's, it's a lot of that kind of stuff. And again, when you, typically if, if I'm going to make a video on somebody, and I've already shown this in, in terms of Noah Samson, I'll watch their video and then also research their research. So when Noah made his third video on me and posted a bunch of research about diet and exercise and health, he actually didn't read any of the articles. He just read the abstracts. I went and read everything he did. He, he looked at and was able to comment on it further because of that. But there are plenty of points in his video where it's like he didn't do any sort of outside research outside of watching the videos that he watched. And he makes a bunch of mistakes because of that. When you say abstracts, is that like a summary? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't explain that. Your no, audience probably doesn't. No, you're good. I mean, I don't know either. Do. I'm, like, I'm yeah. Like retarded. Yeah. Abstract is, 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 so if you're trying to look for, like, I'm, I'm trying to do studies on how rats interact with a certain drug, because I'm trying to figure out if uh, my my new drug will work. What I'm going to do is try to filter out all the studies that are irrelevant to what I'm looking for. And so abstracts are a way of doing that. They they post a summary of, of what's in the paper. They post the most significant findings, but they don't really, they don't post any of the methodology. They don't post the discussion. They don't post the tables and all the important stuff that helps you determine if a study is, uh, if a study is actually accurate. Mm-hmm. So you can't just read an abstract and say, well, this said 60% of blah, blah, blah did this uh, because you need to actually evaluate if that 60% number is valid, either statistically or by their how they did the research mm-hmm. so you just think you does bad research i was pretty surprised by uh i was surprised that your video even went down to be honest because i mean i mean i i've seen enough and enough of it to know that you weren't like calling her ugly or like saying you're like disgusting or like you're like it, it wasn't like clearly like attacking intrinsic attributes it was more like you can dress better which you know once again i think that part was a little cringe i guess but um i don't think it was like violating tos so i'm curious why they did that ultimately youtube is not consistent with their enforcement of policy so my best guess would be they thought it might cause some kind of media situation where there's articles written about it and then there's like an advertiser boycott so that's that's generally the assumption that i have with youtube where they're trying to avoid bad press and they're like oh well illumination got harassed and docs so we're just going to take down this video to like set an example or whatever um yeah or a bot did it i think it's a lot more likely that it was just a bot because uh when i did the appeal it, it didn't even have enough time to actually watch the video it's it's, it's like the, the it's possible that it was so. a bot but do you think it was a coincidence that it like it happened the same day as video went up i feel like that can't be a coincidence I mean, that's that's a really, really odd coincidence. Yeah. Like the video was like so, up for what, like a week or two before it came out? Oh, mm-hmm. no. This video is up for months. Yeah. I, I released that video on like February 28th. And then all of a sudden this video comes oh. out and it goes down. So it's, I mean, yeah. it's, it's kind of, I feel like there's so, definitely somebody at YouTube saw that video and was like, okay, we're going to take action. Like a, like a part of, and, and you know, he's friends with Hassan. Hassan's rich and has like a lot of friends in this industry. So it could be something like that. Uh, I wouldn't have any proof of that, but I'm sure no one would be dumb enough to, to reveal anything like that but it, it's sure. possible that that video had something to do with it uh, again very very convenient timing yeah and your video went also down. Do you it, have a warning or a strike what's the deal with that no i got a strike and also um on the on the topic of mass flagging it could just be that he uh, you know accused me of some pretty horrendous shit and so people mass flagged the video in response and mm-hmm. youtube responded to the mass flagging i don't uh, youtube was like well we don't do this when people mass like i don't really believe that uh, i mean there have been plenty of examples where people have gotten mass flagged and then they their channels went down 
down. Yeah, I don't I don't really believe that either. And also, he puts a lot of faith in like YouTube's system of policy enforcement, which is something that historically has been pretty yeah. bad. So yeah, because he's on the correct side of politics, so he can he can have that convenient belief. I mean, yeah. So I mean, I mean, not not to say that <laughs> that you you can't have left leaning ideas, but YouTube clearly has a bias and lets people get away with some horrendous shit if they have the right political beliefs. And yeah, and Noah I mean, Sampson has certainly has done things that are or said things that are at least uh, as uh, I guess insulting as things that I said in the animation video. Yeah, he says thing, those things about me directly, which is stupid. So you should you should be taking his channel down too. He made, like made fun of your appearance or whatever. Um, well, he made fun of my voice. I don't think he made fun of my appearance, which is again arguably a, a more intrinsic. Tra you can change your voice, but it's arguably more intrinsic than saying wear a different outfit. Right. I mean, uh, I thought he kind of made fun of your appearance just with the funny pictures of you. I don't think that that's something that should be like banned or anything. I don't think he's like he should be like, kicked off YouTube or whatever. Um, no, and neither do I. I think it's the whole thing is stupid. Nobody. I mean, you should be able to get away with far worse and not get banned from YouTube. Yeah. Did uh, what do you what do you think is a step forward from this? Are you gonna have to change how you do videos? Or, like, what is what's um, kind of the approach here? Th there's there's I mean, in terms of like the YouTube rules, so there's there's no changing how you do videos in terms of that because they'll just change the rules to whatever they want. Are are you gonna? I don't know, avoid making videos like this in the future because you're afraid of some kind of retaliation from them. I've, I don't think you did anything wrong that deserves a ban or anything, but um, no. Like it, the only thing I would do is like again, I'd probably be a little bit more sensitive of how I would deal with with the appearance thing with someone who uh, has very clearly said they're insecure about their appearance and they're lo it's a little bit of a tender area. So I probably would kind of reflect in that in terms of like, hey, this person might actually watch the video. Maybe I should be a little bit more careful about how things are worded. Yeah. Um, that I would do differently. But in terms of like the con, no, there's there's no way to do things differently because literally, how many creators uh, do do can you call people stupid or they make fun of things that they wear or you know, like Ethan is online, they'll make fun of people for being bald, which is an intrinsic trait that they can't change. Mm -hmm. But they can, um, but, so but they can get away with it, right? They can get away with it. Yeah, like Ethan, how many times Ethan online has done that like a bunch of times? Like I I found it in almost every video of his I watched. Yeah, and he's not really in a position to be making fun of people's appearances. Um, yeah, really, which is why it's funny, which is why I put that in the video. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, I think that another frustrating argument that Noah made in that video was he basically said that well she didn't really try to deplatform him. You could say she was on the way to doing that, but YouTube has a three strike system and blah blah blah. And it's like I feel like that's kind of a it's, it's just kind of a non-starter. Like okay, obviously that one video going down probably won't lead to him getting banned, but you're still affecting his income. Like if you get a strike, you know I think that I don't remember if one strike prevents you from uploading, but I know two strikes definitely prevents you from uploading for a little while. Um, because I've been one strike does before. you can't upload for you can't upload for a week which sucks is I was about to upload a video so that has affected my income. Yeah, there you go. Um, so it, it just seemed like kind of a kind of a very dumb argument. Like I don't think Illumination necessarily wants your channel banned, but I don't think she would feel bad if you did get banned. I don't think I don't think she would cry about it, you know. She'd probably pop a bottle of champagne um, or something. Well, uh, since since everybody's fucking sharing DMs, one of the things he did was share the DMs between Dylan and I, uh, her friend. Mm -hmm. uh, Dylan fully said that deplatforming wasn't a problem. Yeah. He thinks I should be as far as I remember, I have to go back and look at the DM, but like I'm pretty sure he said that me being deplatformed is, is is uh, something he wants yeah I'd imagine, over that video i'd imagine you'll be doing some kind of response video to all of this pretty soon uh, yeah i'm trying to kind of say because this all just happened yesterday so i haven't had time to fully fact check anything so i want to be very careful about how i say certain things as i might have remembered the context incorrectly and i wouldn't want to do anything uh like like noah Sampson would do and accuse somebody of things that other people said as opposed to what um, i actually said right yeah because noah did that quite a lot in his video i will say it's pretty frustrating that this site got you into some trouble when uh i mean obviously you never wanted her to get docked or whatever but if they hadn't done that the situation probably wouldn't have escalated the way it did um yeah it's and i mean it's so as far as i'm aware she was already doxxed before and these are probably just the same people doxing her again because sure. they don't like her her race her race um yeah they they, they that's how they doxed her because she was jewish both times uh, i didn't know she was jewish okay gotcha yeah, yeah. um so and they're like i mean they're like the nick fuentes types and shit like that so it's like they're they're pretty racist yeah yeah it's extremely frustrating it's uh it's a it's a pain in the ass I also I thought that clip he had at the beginning of the video where he basically said that you took her out of context because you, you cut out a little clip which <laughs> I don't think that clip changed very much it was a clip about like dietary restrictions or health conditions or whatever um I thought it was a pretty meaningless clip and it didn't it didn't it didn't really have anything to do with the argument you were making oh for how meaningless that clip is you'd be surprised how many people were like oh bro own you took this person out of context you're a terrible person what about that three seconds man um in, in the terms three, of the three seconds creation, wasn't like, wasn't really meaningful to what she was saying yeah uh, and, and I don't it, 
I'd have to watch it again, but I don't think he said, like, like where's my motive to maliciously take out a part where she said, unless you have uh, diabetes or uh, allergy restrictions and shit like that, you should eat whatever you want. Um, well, obviously, like, I'm not going to accuse somebody of, of saying people with allergies should go die because they want to eat McDonald's and they're allergic to McDonald's. Uh, that would be a very stupid claim, and obviously Illy, uh, Alyssa wasn't saying that. Um, so I never made any claim like that, so removing that context uh, isn't important. They can't describe any sort of malicious intent. They can't describe any sort of extra benefit re removing that clip from uh, my video would, would create. So it's just like, yeah. it, it seems like Noah just picked a random part of the video and was like, uh, well, actually, if you wait three seconds, another thing is said, which you can do with basically anything. Like you're always going to be removing some sort of context to make the video interesting, to not make it so you have to watch someone else's entire video to respond to it because that will bore the audience. Yeah. So you can basically make that claim anytime. And actually, this is not the first time Noah's done this. The thing is, I, I feel stupid. like unless you're cutting really mean, meaningful context it doesn't it doesn't really matter and i don't i don't think it was that it was that meaningful because that's not the argument you were addressing in that clip anyway basically neither was it for her it was just it was just like you know you got to do this as a creator every so often like the uh you know i'm not saying clause of your of your arguments and people don't accuse you of like horrendous things yeah and so that's all she was doing so she obviously wasn't like saying anything meaningful about allergies or diabetes in that case yeah no there were people in the comments who seemed to i guess take your video the wrong way or misinterpret it how do you feel about uh i don't do you feel any responsibility for those people who seemingly took it and ran a little bit um do you think you can ran, like, yourself white. better well like for example they were saying things like she literally said that fucking uh she literally said you should take fentanyl and, and you'll be fine she literally said this you know there were a lot of misinterpretations. Uh, it, it depends on when that commentary happened because uh you know i, I word my videos pretty carefully in, in most cases and a lot of the people who responded to the drama didn't especially the smaller channels were saying a lot more radicalized and ridiculous things so i'm guessing that's where those types of claims came from because none of those types of claims came until everybody started reacting to it. Right. Like even even the doxing didn't happen until everybody reacted the, to the video. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there, there have been plenty of other creators that I've um, commented on, and doxing has never happened. Mm. Of course, in case I, in case somebody wants to clip, uh, doxing obviously is fucked up and not okay. It's hor horrible that she got doxed over this. Yeah, but it's not it's, it's not your fault. I think is the great is the greater point there. It's just not. I don't think you should. Yeah, be, but they're, they're going to try to pin anything they can to me because they're, they're going to try to pin anything they can because they're I don't know they're ideologically possessed or something like that, or they just want to win. And yeah, I just I don't think like I would I would try to monetize someone's doxing like Noah did. I think a lot if it of was it, not that well known. I think a lot of it is they just it's just a friendship thing. I don't think it's like a principal thing. I think it's just like it's their friend. Probably whatever the probably says is, is right. Right. I think that's a lot of it. And that's that's just how a lot of people work. Unfortunately, um, they're not really yeah. bound to principle or whatever. And, you know, that's how it happens. I know you pointed out. And I think in one of your videos that her and some of her friends like Hassan or whatever. And Hassan is notorious for <laughs> not acting in the most uh, not acting in the most respectful, conductive ways for conversation or doing the right thing. So I think it's kind of silly, but I think the way he gets away with it is because they think you're anti-woke or whatever, and he's pro-woke, and that's kind of the way they see it, right? Yeah, basically, it's just a team thing. Like, a lot of um, a lot of times when you do deal with stuff like this or even things like YouTube rules, you kind of, you can't read what the rules say. You kind of have to read in between the lines to understand that that people are biased, they have certain friendships, there are certain power games being played. Um, and so you need to read the rules in, in every way with those possible interpretations. So even though the rules say things like you can't make fun of someone Someone's, or like you can make fun of uh, the way someone plays a video game or the way someone dresses or how they present an argument unless those people are, are connected to some people who know people at YouTube and then you can't if they get really offended. Right. Like Hassan's not going to get offended over this or what people say about him but but certain people might and they might be uh, willing to you know get their friends to to all brigade a channel or something like that or all make videos about it. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty frustrating situation. I'm curious if other bigger people are going to cover it. Uh, I did kind of harass Destiny to cover he's like i'm doing debate prep right now bye so he's got stuff to do i guess but i was curious his thoughts he, he seemed to agree with me based on the information i gave him but um yeah i feel like it's an important issue for people to talk about i, th uh, I think i think what happened to you is wrong even if your video could have been wrong or bad or whatever else even if you had misrepresented her egregiously which it seems to me you didn't but even if you did do that i don't think that um i don't think your video deserves to go down for it i think people should be able to say what they want on youtube um but the problem and the further problem is like how do you how do you enforce some of these principles if you kind of say like uh misinformation or egregiously misrepresented well it's like I mean, there are plenty of other youtubers that do is. that yeah like I, I i have like pretty pretty objective proof that noah's done that in in videos on me um like with the research thing that i mentioned like th this was a pretty pretty egregious misinformation campaign with this research that you didn't even read and you just printed it as fact and then you made a follow-up video not addressing the fact that you didn't read the studies when you were caught red-handed right. so that's that's pretty um you know malicious mis misinformation there uh so now i don't think noah should 
should be banned or receive any sort of, uh, you know, consequences from YouTube for that. I think she should be made fun of for that. But to take away someone's YouTube channel over being wrong about something is stupid. Right. I did message Noah about this. He said he didn't want to come on stream. He said I could ask him questions. So I asked him, I said, my biggest question would be if you think that TBYS should be held responsible for the actions of a third party side that doxed Illy. I agree his video about it was kind of silly, but from my perspective, it's not really his fault. Some people took it too far, especially considering you never support the kind of behavior from what I've seen. From what I saw, your video was somewhat vague with the wording, or maybe I just find it dumb. You would truly blame him for what they did, but yeah, looking for a more elaboration if you have any. He said, held responsible in what sense? I said, well, from your perspective, is he responsible and what should YouTube do about it? He said, my issue with this framing is that blame and responsibility is treated as a binary. Either you are, you aren't. I think situations like these are gray areas that are worth exploring. Obviously, he didn't ask anyone to dox her, but I do think that with his videos he created, the conditions under which something like that was very likely to happen. My decision to make no claims as to what YouTube should do about it was intentional. I didn't comment on the validity of the report, let alone ask for the video's removal, because my opinion on these things is relevant to my critiques. I just addressed the circumstances around it and why I think a lot of the claims made about the situation were false. Not only false, but super inflammatory, like his claims that her videos will end up killing fat people or endangering her child audience. Is it not worth examining why the people on the third party site all shared motivations that were pulled directly from his videos? If my arguments about how we conjure these narratives are correct, then wouldn't that put at least some responsibility on him for this chain of events, given that the things he, in my opinion, fabricated were their main motivation? So he's basically saying he believes you fabricated stuff about her, therefore they did this, therefore you are partially responsible, is basically what he's saying. Yeah, he's basically saying that. I mean, he said it straight up in the video multiple times that I'm responsible for it. So I, I don't think, and even if he, you know, backtracked and gaslighted on it and said, oh, no, I don't actually believe that. Well, you still put it in the video multiple times, so you obviously do. Um, something I was going to say in, rel in response to that that uh, I forgot. Um, anyway, so. Yeah. I think that. Um, I don't remember what it was. I think this is a dangerous road to walk down where creators are held responsible for the actions of their audience because there could easily be a case in the near future where Noah paints a narrative about someone, whether he's correct or not, and then somebody doxes them, and then he is now held responsible. And I, I think that's it's, what it's I was going to say. That that um, you, I mean, he, he's going to talk about like threats and stuff. The, the, the way you present information will cost. I've gotten uh, multiple threats after his video uh, on me. And by the way, I've never gotten threats from other uh, anytime another creator has been made has made a video on me. So basically, you know, by his arguments, his is the way he presented the information in the, those videos that was um, pretty horrendous and pretty incorrect uh, caused people to uh, maliciously threaten me. Mm -hmm. So by no, by no is a own, own argumentation. He's responsible for those threats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's probably a decent argument for you to make in your video. Um, yeah. Why wouldn't I? But now I don't personally believe that. I think that's stupid. Yeah. But it is the argument he made. Yeah. So you'll, you'll obviously, you know, have to hold him for that. Gotcha. Well, I guess uh, we're going to get your, what is this your fourth Illumination video? Third or something? Yeah, I was, I was, uh, <laughs> Now I have to. It has to be like I was basically almost done with another video that I've been working on for about a month and a half, but haven't been able to get to because of the alienation stuff. And I am extremely close to releasing that. Now I can't release it. I have to release another alienation video. Yeah, I will say just be very careful with how you word that because YouTube is watching you right now. Um, and they're looking for any reason to take that video down. So I would say just be very careful with how you go about doing that video and the wording you use because um, YouTube is a big like they'll tolerate drama to some extent, but they have like a big like no toxic drama policy. Like, for example, with Jack's Films and Sniper Wolf, right? When that went down, um, and Sniper Wolf kind of docks Jack's Films on her Instagram story, uh, YouTube stepped in and they were like, hey guys, we don't like the behavior on both sides of this, despite the fact that she's clearly the one that went really over the line. And what you can Girl. assume from that is just that they don't like the drama getting to a mainstream level and becoming a big thing people talk about. They don't like the fact he made a bunch of videos about her and was mean to her. Um, so just be careful with how you go about this because it could get you in more shit. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I might have to um, release the other videos so there's some space between them. That's probably what I'll do is release the video I was going to release first and then release the, the fourth one. Yeah. Because um, I'm sure what, what I, I can't assume any sort of, after basically accusing me of attempted murder, I can't assume that Noah would use any sort of good faith argumentation there. Sure. Um, so I had, I, I'll just have to do this strategically. So you can't be like, well, hey, YouTube, he made four videos in a row about the same YouTuber. Let's target her. To the, remember what Leafy did? Some bullshit like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's possible. I mean, I assume all these people are fucking supportive of Leafy being banned. I don't think that would be surprising, unfortunately. It's a very weird world we live in. Um, yeah. All right. Well, appreciate you coming on, buddy. Good luck with uh, good luck with all this. Hopefully, you don't get another strike or anything. Yeah. Thanks. Hopefully, I don't. All right. Take it easy, bro. Yeah. Bye.